Hi there and welcome to this video where I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction to public forum debate. So first, what are the event basics? What is public forum and how can you participate? So first of all, public forum is a partner event. That's one of the things that makes it different from other debate events and other speech events like Lincoln Douglas debate, original oratory, etc. It's also a debate event every one to two months. There's a new resolution or topic which the teams debate in the round. In each round, two partnerships debate the resolution in front of a judge who decides who wins the round. One team affirms the resolution where they agree with it, and the other team negates or argues against the resolution. So those are some basics. Let's move on to the structure of how it works. So each team has two speakers since it's a partner event. We refer to them as the first speaker and the second speaker. And in the round, every speaker gives two different speeches. So there's also these periods that are cross examinations. You might know them from the courtroom, which is basically where both teams are able to ask questions of the opposing sides. Um, there are four sets of speeches. We'll talk about those in the next slide, as well as three cross X periods. So this is the important document. You might want to take a picture of this or a screenshot so that you can remember for new debaters that oftentimes takes a long time to kind of remember the order. So basically you first have the first constructive speech and second constructive. Those are just where you read your arguments and you explain what your arguments are. And those are by the first speakers. So the first team A, first speaker reads the first constructive and team B, team B's first speaker reads the second constructive. Those are both four minutes. After that, there's a crossfire where the first speakers on both teams can ask each other questions and sort of interrogate each other. Then we move on to the rebuttals, which are also four minutes, and the second speakers give these. And we'll talk more about what exactly happens in these speeches later, but this is basically what the speech times are and who gives them. So basically it's sort of alternating. And then after the two rebuttals, there's a crossfire between the people who just spoke. So crossfires, other than grand crossfire, crossfires are usually between the people who just spoke and they interrogate each other, ask each other questions. Crossfires are always three minutes. Then there's summary speech. Those are both three minutes. You kind of, you're kind of getting the structure now, kind of the order. And then afterwards, there's a grand crossfire where everybody speaks. Everybody can ask each other questions, all four debaters in the round. Then there's two final focuses, and those are the second speakers. So summary is the first speaker, and final focus is the second speaker. So when you have a team of two people, nobody speaks twice in a row, except cross, no one speaks twice in a row. The first speaker talks, then the second speaker talks, then the first people talk, then the second speaker talks. <clears throat> so now let's move on to how exactly the speeches work. So during your speech time, so not crossfire, but during your own speech, only you can talk. So nobody else can heckle you or argue against you or yell or boo or anything like that. And you're supposed to use all of your time and without going over the time limit. So generally there's somewhat of a grace period. So if you go, you know, five, 10 seconds over, usually no one cares. Some judges are more kind of crazy about it. Some debaters will, you know, hold up their phone to humiliate you if you go over time. But generally you're fine as long as you're within five seconds of the speech time, but everyone needs to use all their time. So the point of the constructive speech is to introduce your main arguments. So in debate, we call those contentions. So generally teams have anywhere between two and four contentions, sometimes just one. But basically how that works is you have four minutes to read your contentions, your arguments. And generally that's pre-prepared before the round. It's almost all like it's always written out already and you already have your evidence pre-prepared before you go into the round. In rebuttal, you respond to what your opponent said. And then the summary and final focus is what we call the back half of the round. And that's basically where you argue both sides points. So you kind of reiterate why your points are more important. And then the final focus, you just keep narrowing it down. So you, in summary and final focus, the main goal, they're somewhat similar because the main goal is to kind of explain why you win, why your points are better and narrow the round down to the most important things that are going on to explain why you win. And you'll learn more about that later. And so now this is the talk about the speeches, but now let's talk about the cross examinations. So the cross examinations are for some people, the more exciting part of debate when you're first joining, because it's like, you know, yelling, you get to kind of 
argue with the other people directly and it's kind of how a lot of people see debate and think of debate outside of the actual competitive debate community <clears throat> so basically each team asks questions of the other team generally it alternates there's no rule that it has to alternate but usually there's some customs in cross um the first speaking team the custom is that the first speaking team asks the first question so generally cross will start off with okay since we spoke first can we have the first question and then usually they'll say yes and then generally it's kind of a battle for time sometimes so you're not supposed to give speeches you're generally supposed to ask and answer questions but a lot of people will try to give speeches or just explain their points and sometimes you're going to have to kind of cut them off and you'll learn more about that in the future of how exactly you're supposed to go about um, cross-examination but generally try to be respectful of your opponent and try not to interrupt them so now some important vocabulary so debate has is known for having a ton of jargon and random words so it might seem intimidating but you'll learn the words eventually and but basically here are some basic vocabulary you might know need to know in debate there's also some debate glossaries and things like that online but basically, generally for the affirmative team, the person who's arguing against, arguing for the resolution, who likes the resolution, they we call them affirmative, af, or pro. Proposition, I mean, I don't I haven't heard that used, but I guess it could be used too. So affirmative, af, or pro. And for negative, it's negative, neg, con, or opposition. Opposition is more of a like parliamentary term. Usually when we talk about the opposition, we mean our opponents. But in PF, it's generally negative, neg, con, is the person arguing against the resolution. And the arguments we introduce are usually called contentions, and the responses to those arguments are called refutations. Um, or usually we just say responses, honestly. Refutations is the proper term, but usually people just call them responses. And basically, the reasons why the judge should vote for your arguments over your opponent's arguments, that's called weighing. So that's not responding directly to the contention or trying to say it's not true, but it's basically saying, oh, well, even if it's true, you should prefer our contention because it affects more people or it it hurts more marginalized communities, whereas theirs is just kind of hurts people in general, whereas we need to focus on. Yeah, so it's basically like, why should you prefer our arguments and what we cause over theirs? So how exactly is a winner determined in debate? So basically, the judge, of course, votes for whichever side they think did a better job in the round and so different judges look for different things so generally in debate we categorize two types of judges lay and tech lay judges are just parents who kind of like have no really idea of competitive debate and are just listening just as a normal person would so just imagine you're just arguing with a friend in front of your friends or you know in front of your parents whereas technical judges are former debaters who are okay with you speaking faster, who have better note-taking techniques called flowing, and who just are more advanced and you can have more deep, in-depth argumentation. Also, lay judges care a lot about how you speak, like your presentation style and how confident you seem and kind of dumb stuff sometimes, whereas technical judges generally only care about exactly what you say. So there there are speaker points speaker points are somewhat arbitrary generally they're from 20 to 30 although usually they don't go more than like 26 unless you do something really bad like unless you're like homophobic or you know racist and round generally you won't get lower than 26 but different judges do different things and speaker points are basically about the individual um, as opposed to your team and so what the point of them is is to use a tiebreaker and also generally tournaments will be like oh who's the top speaker so who got the most speaker points out of everyone so so now we're going to talk about how exactly the topics are picked so basically all the resolutions are announced one month before their start date um generally they're mo one month with the exception of the first two topics of the semester which we call september september october and november november december and then for the second semester there's a new topic every month and at the beginning of the year you know the topic areas and the, there's usually two potential resolutions and then later in the year they got they get voted on so you decide between the two so for example one of the um the recent most recent topic area was sustain sustainable infrastructure the first possible topic was about high speed rail the second topic was about rare earth minerals and the community voted for high speed rail so that's the topic that was chosen so here are some examples of the topics. 
there's two different types. So the first is the policy resolution, which is basically saying we should do something. So as I gave you the example, of course, is the United States federal government should substantially increase its investment in high speed rail. So that's basically saying the government should do this or the government should do that. The other one is on balance. So that's basically just a comparative and we're just arguing whether it's good or bad. So we're not actually saying something should happen, but we're saying something is good or bad. So for example, on balance, Turkey's membership to is beneficial to the is beneficial to NATO. So that's an example of one or another example is generally the benefits outweigh the harms. So a recent topic was the benefits of organic agriculture outweigh the harms. That was kind of one of the most basic ones. Yeah, and they're often based on, as you can kind of conclude, they're based on current events and domestic or global issues. So there's both domestic ones like high speed rail and also foreign policy ones about like NATO and Turkey and the Baltics and China and Russia. All right. So if you're still curious, um, you can watch some rounds. So honestly, just go to PF videos on YouTube. That's kind of the easiest thing to do. It's very, very simple. Just search out PF videos on YouTube. A lot of them are techy, um, so you, that you might be a little confused. I also have a couple of rounds from Palo Alto from our team on my YouTube channel. So just search up Daniel Grippus Holland, or actually this will probably be on YouTube, so it's probably going to be on the same channel. So just search that up and you'll be able to get that. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry if I went too fast. Um, if you have any questions, just email me or text me on Slack, whatever. All right. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.